Dan Seifert with MobileBurn.com, and today what I have with me is the Samsung Double Time for AT&T. The Double Time is an entry-level Android smartphone that features a, some unique designs and some uh, different things that appeal to the first-time smartphone buyer. Uh, for starters, you've got a pretty thick chassis here, as you can see, as uh, the Double Time is a flipping device, and it's got a full keyboard and internal display, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But the front of the device has a 3.2-inch HVGA screen, so it's uh, 320 by 480 pixels of resolution. It's not the sharpest screen, let's see if we can get my camera to focus here. Uh, and we've kind of been spoiled by the higher resolution screens on higher end phones. But uh, at this size it doesn't really uh, matter all that much and it does look sharp most of the time. Below this display we've got hard buttons for menu, home, back, and search. And up above the display is an earpiece. There's no actual front facing camera or notification light with the double time. If you look at the side of the phone, the bottom here we've got a microphone and a micro USB charging syncing port. The right, uh, excuse me, left hand side of the phone has a volume up and down rocker. Top of the phone here, it's got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and then your power sleep unlock key. You can see that there. And then the uh, right right side is home to the hinge, so you don't really have any controls there. Looking at the back of the phone, it's pretty stark white cover on the back. It's got a little bit of texture to the cover itself, so it uh, does provide a little bit of grip, but this is a pretty slippery phone. It's a glossy plastic, uh, so it could slip out of your hands pretty quickly and easily, so if you happen to be prone to dropping things, or if you're buying this for a younger user, you might want to put a case around it. 3.2 megapixel autofocus camera without a flash. It does record video, but it records at a QVGA resolution, so it's a pretty low res video there. And then we've got a uh, loudspeaker right there. Now if we pop open the rear cover, Take a look at what comes inside. It's a 1200 milliamp hour battery, so it's a pretty small battery, but with uh, the small low power processor and low, small display, it should be able to last through a full day, but you never know with Android, to be honest with you. Underneath that battery or next to that battery is a 2 gigabyte micro SD card. can support up to 32 gigabyte cards, but a 2 gigabyte one is provided out of the box. Samsung says there's about 260 megabytes of internal storage on the double time, but only about 99 or 100 megabytes is available for user apps. So if you're going to be installing a bunch of apps, you're going to be wanting moving to move some to the SD card whenever possible. Then of course you got your standard SIM, SIM slot there. Now the real show or the real attraction to the hardware on the double time is definitely on the inside because we've got a four row QWERTY keypad and then uh, a 3.2 inch HVGA touchscreen, exactly like the outside of the phone. So whatever you have on the outside is replicated on the inside here. You've got dual speakers here underneath these grills, and then you've got your standard, you know, QWERTY keyboard here. It's got buttons for the standard Android functions for menu, home, back, and search at the top. Then you've got QWERTY keyboard layout, alternate key gives you the various buttons, I mean, uh, numbers and symbols, excuse me. And then you've got a D-pad here, dedicated dot com key, uh, a key to access the voice controls and then the symbols key. Um, there's no dedicated at key, which we would have liked to have seen, but um, the dedicated.com key is nice. As far as the keyboard itself, it's very flat. As you can see, if I turn the phone on its side here, the keys all but disappear. So it doesn't have great feedback or travel, but it is well spaced apart, and those who are adept at typing on QWERTY keyboards with their thumbs will probably be able to adjust to it and, speed, and get to speed without uh, too much trouble at all. Thanks to that flipping design, the phone itself is pretty thick. It's about 15 millimeters thick, so it's certainly not the thinnest phone on the market, but that's kind of to be expected. And it weighs about 147 grams or so, so it's right about in the middle of the pack as far as weight goes. Now, Samsung and AT&T kept things pretty simple with the double time. It's running Android 2.2 Froyo with uh, Samsung's TouchWiz interface on top of it. This is an older version of TouchWiz uh, that's been around for quite a while. It is pretty simple. It's not as... Uh, extensive as the TouchWiz 4.0 that we are used to seeing on say like the Galaxy S2 or something like that. It is uh, definitely not as uh, uh, pretty or as many animations with this particular TouchWiz. But it does have some of the other things that we've seen before such as the um, shortcuts to access various settings on the phone itself for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, flight mode, and then the screen rotation. And you've got your side scrolling uh, app drawer here. It is powered by a single core 800 megahertz processor, which for a basic operations is going to be pretty much fine for most users, especially entry level users. Uh, it's not going to be great for powering great games, um, and there will be certain lags. 
uh, in, in various larger applications or if you're doing a heavy amount of web browsing. But for most intents and purposes, the, the 800 megahertz processor pushes around Froyo uh, pretty well. We would really have liked to have seen this launch with Gingerbread, uh, and it is not known whether Samsung or AT&T has plans to add Gingerbread to this or upgrade it to Gingerbread in the future. If we look at the email client here, we've got Samsung's basic email client that we've seen for a long time. It allows you to um, access multiple accounts. You can manage multiple messages easily at once. Supports formatted text. You can pinch to zoom. It's got color and italics, etc. You can rotate it and use it horizontally in landscape mode. Flipping open the screen, it just flips the display right onto the inside where it has all the same features. Pretty standard email client there. Of course, this also includes support for the uh, Android Gmail client. The messaging application is Samsung's standard messaging application for Android. It's got a conversation view, bubbled text messages and such. Now with the double time, you've got a few different options for inputting text. Here we see the swipe keyboard, which comes pre-installed. You also have a standard Android 2.2 keyboard, like so. Or of course you can flip open the phone, which is probably what most owners will do. The reason that they purchased or picked out this phone is for the full QWERTY keyboard. Now taking a look at the browser, the browser is a pretty basic version of the Android browser. Really nothing too exciting here. It does not support Adobe Flash, but it does support embedded uh, HTML5 video. So depending on what video you're watching, you might be able to watch it directly on the phone. Let's see it load up our site here. It loads up our mobile, or loaded up actually our uh, our full site here, and it did it pretty quickly, um, even though it is only an 800 megahertz processor. But you do have to wait for the site to load to really get any sort of uh, accurate response when you're wanting to scroll or move this, the page around. Okay, so now that it's fully loaded, we can scroll a little smoother. Pinch to zoom works. Not quite as smooth as Samsung's higher end phones, but that's kind of to be expected. Double tap to zoom works as well, as you can see. The web browser works in landscape, of course. And here we've got evidence of a embedded HTML5 video, which loads up in its own little player here. So there you go, it gets pretty loud with the external loudspeaker. It does support multiple windows, so if you hit the menu key, you can access multiple windows, you can create a new one. And then go back and switch between the open windows that you have. There you go, and you got evidence of the lack of flash support there. It didn't, it didn't load the flash ad that's embedded in that particular article. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Samsung Double Time comes with a 3.2 megapixel autofocus camera. So you can launch the camera from the shortcut on the screen there. It does not have a camera key because the hinge is in the way of that. Uh, so you do have to use the on-screen controls in order to use the camera. The camera does support autofocus, but it does not support tap to focus. You have to hold the shutter key down, and then it will autofocus and beep with confirmation and then you can release the key to take the picture. You've got some slight controls here, look pretty familiar to anyone who's seen a Samsung phone before. You've got controls for your shooting mode, various scene modes, a little exposure control there, and then various settings here. Let's uh, take a few snaps here and see, if, and see how fast the camera can capture them. Certainly not the fastest autofocus on the market. And then you can review your pictures afterwards. You do have pinch to zoom. Switching over to the video camera, the video camera is pretty limited. You're limited to QVGA resolution, which is uh, 320 by 240. That's a little disappointing. De definitely would have liked to have seen at least VGA resolution with the video on this. Um, but you can record video if you'd like. And you've got Samsung's controls here, which allow you to pause the video or stop the video. So you can pause and then resume the same clip, which is pretty cool. You can zoom while recording too, which is unique. And then once your video is captured, you can review it immediately. And you've got Samsung's controls here, which allow you to pause the video or stop the video, so you can then resume the same clip. 
which is pretty cool. You can zoom while recording too. So there you have it. That's a quick look at the Samsung Double Time for AT&T. The Double Time is an entry-level smartphone running Android 2.2 Froyo with Samsung's TouchWiz interface. Its claim to fame is its dual displays and QWERTY keyboard, though. It's got a 3.2-inch HVGA display on the front and a 3.2-inch HVGA display on the inside, both of which are full touchscreens. So you can touch both screens uh, much in the same way, and they both react the same way. Of course, you've got a four-row uh, QWERTY keyboard down on the bottom of the flip here that comes with a D-pad and a couple shortcut keys. The keyboard is a bit flatter than we'd like to see, but most keyboard um, typists should be able to adapt to it pretty quickly as it is quite spaced out. The phone itself is pretty thick at 15 millimeters thick, thanks to that flipping design. It does have a 3.2 megapixel, uh, megapixel autofocus camera, but the video quality is quite disappointing at only QVGA resolution. It's, power, or it's fueled by a 12 1200, 1200 milliamp hour battery, and uh, Samsung and AT&T are going to be offering this soon for about $49.99 on contract when it hits on November 20th. So for $49.99, it'll probably be a hit this holiday season for those who are looking for a full QWERTY entry-level smartphone, but there are some things that we would like to have seen improved, namely, we would really like to have seen this launch with Android 2.3 Gingerbread at this point. So there you go. It's the Samsung Double Time for AT&T. This is Dan Seifert with MobileBurn.com.